Hey everyone, I'm John, and we're gonna be talking about how to focus with hyperfocus. Now first, a primer. Everyone is wired differently, and so some tactics might work for you, and some won't. So just pick the ones that ultimately work and jive with your lifestyle. It never hurts to experiment, so try some new things and see if it sticks. Now the first thing we're gonna talk about is being mindful. And especially when you notice that your focus is fading, you wanna be mindful so that you can do something that is mindless. That's something that just kinda of gets your mind off of what you are focusing on. The more that we can manage our attention with intention, the more productive and creative that will ultimately be. So this is that you wanna direct your attention to the most important thing. And you wanna be able to sustain your attention so that you don't get burnt out of your focus. This is to say that the necessary work is usually unattractive. It's things we don't really wanna be doing. You have unnecessary work that is kind of unattractive and unproductive. You also have distracting work, which is unproductive and it's just kind of like a black hole of your productivity just goes down the drain. But then you have purposeful work and this is your sweet spot of where you wanna be. So the one thing you should think about is that there is a finite amount of things that we can focus on. We really weren't born to multitask. This is to say that when we're focusing on one thing, our short-term memory is only going to remember that for so long. So this is where you need to become aware of what you're thinking about and just have that mindfulness kick in for you. Simply just noticing what is on your mind and taking your attention is going to help you be more productive in the long run. So productivity is not about just cramming more things in our day. It's making our day more meaningful with things that actually matter. So constantly shifting our focus between one thing and another thing, it's really just going to lead to poor results. The only time that switching becomes easy is when we actually complete the first thing we set up to do. So set intentions more often. Modify your environment to be less distracting. Overcome that mental resistance that is preventing you from doing. Eliminate any distraction that is potentially going to derail you from what you're doing. And last but not least, you have to clear your mind so that your mind doesn't get distracted with the many things that you'll be thinking about. So you need to enter this mode of being deliberate and focusing your attention on one thing. And then you just need to focus on that one task. This is what hyperfocus means to have one task and to work on it in a meaningful and purposeful way. The best way to become more productive is to have an intention before you go into doing. One thing that you can do at the start of every day or at the end of every day is to list three things that you want to accomplish in that day or the next day. These are going to be the most important tasks that you need to complete on that day. So although you can have a goal and an intention for that day, Nothing will ultimately get done unless you actually act upon it. So make a very detailed plan of what you want to accomplish. Your goals need to have plans and your plans need to have a where, when, and which type of action you're going to do to accomplish it. This is where you need to set a very specific intention. First, you can really start by just feeling out the intention. You'll be anticipating the obstacles that might come up. You'll set that timer to get started and you'll just focus and do the thing. But what you don't wanna be doing is switching tasks. This happens really often. We'll switch tasks every 40 seconds of doing one thing, going to another thing, and ultimately we don't actually get anything done. So every time that you are distracted, it can take up to 25 minutes just to get back into what you are doing. And on average, if we are working on two tasks at a time, we're going to be distracted very, very often because of that. So you need a way to become aware of when you are actually getting distracted. And once you become aware of how often you're interrupted, you're never going to look at it the same. It doesn't matter how many notifications you have on social media or if you have friends that wanna game with you that night because you'll know that you'll get distracted and it's going to set you back from your goals. So you have to remove these obstacles of attention and just get them out of the way. Because if your brain is going to think about doing one of them, it's probably going to choose that over the boring, productive thing that you wanna do. So this is where something handy like a distraction blocker app can come into play. I personally use Freedom. It's a great application for blocking websites and apps. I use this every single day. It really has helped me just gain my focus. You can also put your computer into a do not disturb or a notification free mode 
This will also help you limit all those emails and messages that you might get in the day. One thing I like to do is to have noise canceling headphones to just prevent all the distractions from coming my way. And if you have a distracting environment at home, you need to get out of your house, get out of the office, wherever you need to go, just so you can focus. You need to start having an intention for the digital devices that you use on a daily basis. You should be asking yourself, does this notification serve me or is it just distracting me? What you can do is just scroll through your apps of all your notifications and just ask yourself, am I going to like a notification from one of these apps? And if not, just remove it. It's no harm, no foul. And when it comes down to messages, check messages only in a block of time. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly scrolling and refreshing pages. One of the best exercises to become more mindful is to just grab a piece of paper and tally every time that you get distracted with a website or an app. So if you check your email, you'll put a tally for that. If you check your Facebook, you'll put a tally for that. If you check your Twitter, you'll put a tally for that. Now you can be more intentional. You can pre-decide on what you're actually going to check. So if one day you wanna say, I wanna focus on email, you have made the intention to focus on email for that allotted time but you wanna limit your point of contact. And what this really means is that you can be emailed, you can be called, you can be text messaged, whatever it might be. You wanna limit this so that you actually control how you can get contacted. So let's talk about meetings and your calendar. The first thing you wanna do is never attend a meeting if it doesn't have an agenda. It's almost pointless. If you notice that there's a lot of reoccurring meetings on your calendar, you need to start questioning them. Look through the attendance lists and start to challenge if everyone included on those meetings actually needs to be there. And when you're in the meetings, focus on the meetings. Don't just let your attention drift or multitask while you're in the meetings. And if you really need to be productive, you need to start to distance yourself away from it. So you can be a bit more productive by just changing up your environment. For example, when you are working in a space, if you clean up after you're done with it, it's very likely that you'll be able to focus the next time you go to it. You can find yourself some productive music, like some upbeat jazz or even some techno. You also have to think about your brain as an environment. Your brain is for ideas, not necessarily for holding every single thing that you need to do. So an empty brain is a productive brain. You need to start to get everything on paper or in some type of task management app. And if you're a worrier, you wanna be listing all these things down just so you get it out of your mind. So simplify your working and your living environments. That's all you have to do. Clear your head of distraction and you're going to be more productive. When we do knowledge work, we tend to do a lot of unproductive things. We'll check email, social media, and we'll do those like unproductive tasks that make us feel like we're doing something. That's because we're happier just doing tasks that don't necessarily have to grab our complete attention. However, if you possess a greater working memory, you're going to be able to be more productive and get rid of those distractions so you can focus on meaningful work. So this is really where it comes down to mindfulness and meditation. Both of these things are going to drastically improve how you manage your attention. This is going to help you realize when you don't have time for something, it's just a lie. You do have time for something. You need to be able to make time or become more productive to do that. So we talked about hyper-focus, but there's also this concept of scatter-focus. And scatter-focus is really simple. It's the opposite of focus. It's where you just let your mind wander. This helps your mind visit the past, the present, the future. And if you use this deliberately, your subconscious is going to be doing all the work for you. So try, just let your mind float freely and just capture what attention is brought to you. For example, you'll be thinking of a problem and that problem is pretty tough and you'll sleep on it. And the morning of, you'll be in the shower and you'll think of a solution. Well, why is that? This is your subconscious doing all the work for you and this is where your attention is captured in your subconscious. This gives your mind the space and time it needs to make those connections naturally. This is because some of those problems that we encounter, they're non-linear and they need more broader connections to make sense. So you can make it a habit of using scatter focus on a day-to-day -day basis. This is leaving enough room for you to just relax and to get your mind off of work, to decompress. 
So again, hyperfocus is about focusing on one thing and scatter focus is about thinking about nothing. With hyperfocus, you're going to be directing your attention outward. But with scatter focus, you're going to be directing your attention inward. So the more that we scatter focus, the more replenished and recharged we're going to feel for being more hyper focused. So for every 90 minutes of hyper focus, you need to spend about 15 minutes just scatter focused. 90 minutes is kind of a magic number. 90 minutes is how long that we sleep in a sleep cycle. And having a break every 90 minutes gives us a short peak to just have a rest between. So now on the topic of sleep, because sleep is important for your productivity. In fact, for every hour of sleep that you miss, you're going to lose out on about two hours of productivity. So in most cases, it's actually better to get a full night's rest and work fewer hours just to get recharged for the next day. And you really should not be feeling guilty about taking breaks or resting. This is essential. So let's talk about the importance of reading and information in general, especially for our attention. No two pieces of information are created equal. It is worth auditing and increasing the quality of the dots or the information that you regularly input into your brain. So like any piece of information that leverages or supports your existing skills is usually a good thing. And while you can read a book in less than 10 hours, think of it on the opposite end. It could take years to write a book and that you get to consume that in a very short amount of time. And books provide access to the highest quality information you can get. You should be consuming more useful information and getting rid of useless information. So take stock of everything that you consume and intentionally consume more valuable information. Hyperfocus allows us to remember more, which leads to more valuable connections when we're in a scatter focus mode. And scatter focus lets us recharge, which makes us more productive when we're hyper focused. One thing to say is that having a positive mood or a mindset is going to expand your attentional space. For example, the happier you are, the more likely you'll put new ideas together in creative ways. A negative mood, however, it really shrinks your attentional space. So the next time that you're in a bad mood, you should just write down the things that are on your mind. You can use a tactic like gratitude and just writing down what you're grateful for that day to really help boost your mood. You may also want to consider your biological prime time. This is the time where you are your most productive or in your prime. This is the time of the day that might be different for everyone. For example, you might be productive in the mornings, afternoons, or even evenings. So try to find out what your biological prime time is and then schedule your hyper-focus sessions for that time. So you want to combine both hyper-focus and scatter-focus modes at least a few times each every single day. This really just helps you balance out your productivity. This will help you plan for the future, connect new ideas, and recharge to tackle on the next day. And that was how to focus with hyperfocus. We'll see you next week.